expect to be on there. And I'm only going to put them on as two formulas, not the 400,000, no, it's not that many that your book uses. I'm sure it seems that way. Law of sides and law of cosines. These are going to be things that will work with right triangles that are not right triangles. Our sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, all those definitions are all applicable only to right triangles. What we need now is what do we do if we don't have a right triangle? Because the world is not made up of a bunch of right triangles. But it's not usually. So we are going to apply the law of sines to determine length, length and sides of the angles. Word problems are going to come up. Law of cosines is going to do the same thing. More word problems. And then there's one weird formula that they stick in here related to triangles. It's called Harris formula. How many of you have ever heard of Harris formula before? Got one. Heron's formula is a way to find an area of, the tri of a triangle that you don't have a height for, but only have the bricks of the three sides. And, yeah, you knew more than I did when I was a freshman in college. I finally learned about Heron's formula when I was teaching uh, Math 142, because it shows up in that class. So, the three formulas in here, the law of sines, law of cosines, and Heron's formula. Here's the law of sines. And by the way, your book may turn this over, it doesn't matter. We have a triangle, and on the triangle we have sides A, B, and C. It doesn't matter which side is labeled which, but here's what does matter. We have angles alpha, beta, and gamma. Angle alpha has to be opposite whatever side is labeled side A. Angle beta has to be opposite whatever side is labeled side B, and angle gamma has to be opposite whatever side is labeled side C. Bless you. And if we have that, then we can actually make ratios to help us find angles and sides. And the ratios go like this. Sine of alpha divided by A is equal to the sine of beta divided by B is equal to the sine of gamma divided by C. Now once upon a time, I had a student tell me, oh, but you can just do that without all the signs. Well, no, you can't. We know that bigger angles are opposite bigger sides, but there's not that ratio until you actually put the signs and the angles in there. Now, you ready for the next one? No, nope, not yet. And when I say your book may turn this over, um, if the measures of the sides were on top and the signs of the angles were on the bottom, it doesn't change anything. Um, and it depends on which book you look at as to how this is set up. I know at least the formula sheet that we had last semester had it set up this way. All right, now we're ready? Here's the law of cosines. Same setup for our triangles. And here's the part that's really dumb. Your book gives three, piece, three laws of cosines. You don't really need them, you only need one. Because basically, since it didn't matter which side you labeled A, you could just label the appropriate side A and all the rest of them as necessary. But basically what it says is if you take side A squared, that's equal to side B squared plus side C squared minus 2 times B times C times the cosine of alpha. And what's important is the angle in the cosine part is opposite the side that's on the other side of the equal sign. The other two sides are in here with your cosine, but the angle has to match up with being opposite the side that's on the other side of the equal sign there. And that's all these are saying is, notice here's angle beta, and we match up with B, side B, where our other two sides show up in here. Here's angle gamma, matched up with side C, where the other two sides show up here in the right spots. So now, let's apply some of these. We're not going to get this formula to a lot of problems will actually say this. Use the law of sines or use the law of cosines to do the problem. So this one says use the law of sines to find the value of side x. Ratio because the only length you have is often the 
Right. The only side that I have a measure for is the 26.7, which is opposite the angle that is not given. But because I've got the two other angles and I know the three angles of a triangle add up to 180, I can always find that. So angle C is going to be 180 minus, what do we have, 52 minus 70, which is what? So that's under 10, 60, 58. Yeah. So angle C is 58. So then when I set up my ratio, what will I have? Sine of 58. Sine of 58. Divided by 26.7. Divided by 26.7. Equals sine of 52. Sine of 52. Notice 52 is opposite the side I'm looking for, which is x over x. All right, so I have to solve this. Two questions. <coughs> Cross multiply, so x times the sine of 58 is equal to 26.7 times the sine of 52. So x equals 26.7 times the sine of 52 divided by the sine of 58. Now, it would be tempting to tell you, oh, just put this into web work like that, but remember web work doesn't do degrees. You have to change every one of these from degrees to radians in order to get web work to do it, so it's almost easier just to do it on your calculator. Sine of 52 divided by sine of 58. So hopefully when you did this, you got that x is equal to 24.1593368 Can anybody not get that? <coughs> no? Oh good, you were all in degrees. And you did everything right. One of the most standard things, let me go up here and do the wrong thing and I'll see. So making a standard error I ended up with the number 22.809, blah, blah, blah. The error is that if you don't remember to close your parentheses after 52, you're going to end up with some really strange number. So don't do that. Remember to close your parentheses after your angles. Yeah? Well, here's your angle 52. And it's opposite the side we're looking for. And the formula is always sine of the angle divided by the side, the length of the side opposite that, equals sine of another, the other, another angle in the triangle divided by the length of the side opposite that one. So is that side going to be C? Uh, no, officially the side would be like A, <coughs> because it's opposite the angle A. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Does that make sense? Yeah, we want to make sure we're clear, because this is really easy to use once you're completely clear on how it's supposed to be set up. But if you're not, then it's not fun. All right. How about using the law of cosine?